Hi everybody, welcome back to Pure Love Talks. This is Season 2, Episode 13, and today we're going to be talking about race. Hey everybody, uh, so this is uh, hopefully the conversation on everybody's uh, lips, brains, uh, talking about race and what's going on. Racism, anti-blackness, and police brutality, police murders, uh, all of the rallies, uh, the protests, everything that's happening in the world right now. Um, it's a lot. Right, and so we're thinking about how our parents talking to their uh, children about it, but more specifically, I should say, how are white parents talking to their children? Um, because people of color have been talking to their kids about racism from day one, from the moment they pop out, the moment they're adopted, <laughs> the moment they come, you have to talk about race. We have to talk about white supremacy, and we have to talk about all of, all of the ways in which the world has created barriers for us and how we navigate those barriers, right? To succeed and to live even, just to live. So what are white parents doing? Well, um, I mean, obviously, you know, we don't know what they're telling their children, but we do have, you know, suggestions and ideas of what should be discussed or at least, you know, brought up in these conversations because it's not just one conversation there's multiple conversations that have to happen about many different things and different types of people um and then that goes for parents uh, who are white who have white children and then parents who are white who have poc children children because you know you have to approach that a little bit differently um just like you were saying how um people of color we talk about race constantly because it's for survival and if we don't know how the world works it's gonna bite us in a very obvious way. Um, a lot of times with white people and their whiteness, they don't even realize their privilege or their whiteness or the fact that they're racist until much later in their lives. And for us, you know, it's an instant thing. So, you know, there's a huge learning gap there that's happening where we're not getting the same lessons and we're not living the same lives or at least living in the same world because my world is totally different from somebody else who doesn't even think about race at all well think about race at all right. so you know we have different experiences different feelings different just energies completely because i know what it's like to be afraid to be like okay i'm darker than everybody here who's gonna bring it up who's gonna bother me is somebody gonna try to attack me is there gonna be some type of violence here do i have to worry about police presence and you know like who's with me do i have you know like there's so many things that go through your head whenever you leave your house or i'm going to be in a public space or i'm going to you know like so many things that we have to worry about just to make sure we get home alive and now more than ever you know um people for whatever reason or uh, maybe all the things lined up or so that people are talking about anti-blackness in a much bigger way than they ever have because anti-blackness has existed for so damn long um with and there have been so many murders by police um and now now people are getting a, a different reality um understanding it a little differently um, trying to take steps uh, to move further. Uh, I know in my life uh, there have been uh, many um, white, I would say, white folks who are in solidarity really stepping up and um, making some shifts in how they address um, white supremacy, how they're going to help dismantle structural, the structural um, racism. And so 
we're thinking about how why parents do that at home and of course this is really important and there after the video we're gonna have a uh, bunches of uh, articles uh, podcasts and links, uh, links um, to pieces that um, have a lot of opinions on how we can talk to our kids about this there's one in there about um, how I think the title is uh, it's something about uh, not raising a, um, a white child who's gonna call the cops uh, and so there's a lot of good resources in there, so I really encourage people to look through uh, the resources. Um, and, you know, when we think about race, we we kind of treat race almost like sex in a way. The conversations, uh, the talk. When we say the talk, I mean the talk is the talk about sex, and then there's the talk about race. Uh, race relations, racism, anti-blackness. And um, that has to happen from you know from the from little from you know like as early as uh, six months old I think a child is distinguishing the difference between um, you know um, race uh, and then in Ballander and elementary school they are seeing that people are different they're really realizing oh people look different than me and why is that right and so a lot of times kids don't get to talk about that people of color get to talk about that a lot because you have to navigate that stuff but white people really don't have to and that's the that's a big piece that piece of not having to that is privilege that is so privileged so have you um have you been um you know um what is it a word i'm looking for have you been no that is privilege right and so we want to think about how privilege shows up in your life right and like how do you begin to have these conversations and I think it's all around us to have these conversations all around us um, I keep thinking that it goes beyond that the the, the you know everyone everyone is human uh, everyone is nice uh, be good to people and I think that's a start that's about creating empathy you know but it goes beyond that and I feel like that's the like the seeds to the all lives matter plan Mm. <laughs> that's I don't know because I feel like that's the beginning like we should all be equal everyone is like this we all deserve the same rights and it's like yeah we get it this is why we're doing these protests because it's not like that mm -hmm. so stop saying it mm. so yeah that's or that saying it makes you a nice person like yes I do believe that we should all be equal yes I do believe that um, that uh, the color of someone's skin should not be a reason that they should be discriminated against or murdered. That just agreeing with those ideas doesn't make uh, change. Yes, it doesn't make change, and you haven't done anything to contribute to breaking down that system or that thought process or anything, even within your own families, right? So what what does that look like, right? That looks like. Uh, reading lots of good books that's like um, you know taking some uh, classes that's like learning your history that's like um, reevaluating who is in your life um, there's a great article at the end to um, uh, a woman and I can't forget, remember her name right now but uh, wrote an article because she's a black woman who white parents uh, were calling her her friends and saying how do I talk to my kids about race and so she decided to write this piece and in it she has like a little quiz a little quiz in it to ask you all of these questions about yourself white people questions about yourself to see where you are um, and what you show your kids right because you can tell your kids you know black people are just they're human just like everyone else they should deserve the same rights but do you actually have uh, people of color black people that are in your life I mean really in your life like you are like having a relationship a friendship you're growing with them that that your kids could stay with them you know like that you trust them do you have people like that in your life and there's a bunch of little questions that really show how people are sometimes so immersed in their whiteness and they really don't see well, um, I also think that part of that too for POC parents um, and also why parents with POC children is, and I know the hard part of that is to teach them about society and the world and what's happening, but not instilling pure fear or just right. pure rage inside of them, you know, like, because I know it's easy to be like, oh, you know, like, all cops are like this, and the government is like this, and all white people are like this, you know, if you're angry enough or if you're seeing enough injustice, but 
you know, obviously we all know not all white people believe these things, act mm -hmm. this way, and or associate with people who act that way or believe those things. But, you know, that's bec because of the majority of what we see. That's what, you know, we believe or expect sometimes. But I, I understand that it's difficult because I myself am struggling with how to try to convey this to my son that, you know... It's like, I want to say, you know, it, like, I mean, this might sound terrible, but like, oh, you know, you have a target on your back, but then at mm. the same time, enjoy your life. So it, it's kind of hard to mm. give that same message in the same sentence. And I mean, and it's harder for me too, because I live that on a day to day basis. Like there's so many things that I'm like, I don't think I should do that. Cause I don't know what the crowd is going to be like. I don't know if, you know, if there's cops out there, like, it just there's so many things that I have to consider before I do a lot of things mm. um, and I don't like being afraid to do things because I'm afraid of violence in some way shape or form and I want my son to be not carefree but I want him to you know be excited for things I want him to live his life fully and I don't want him to live in fear because you know it's not fair and it's not his fault that any of this is happening, and I don't want him to go through life feeling this weight on his shoulders mm -hmm. about who he is or his place in this world. Mm -hmm. So that's difficult for me to try to tell him, you know, if you're in danger, you know, or if something's happening, call 911 if anything happens. And then at the same time, like, oh, but be careful and make sure that you have your ID president. Make sure that you're not waving your arms around or right. make sure that you're not wearing a hoodie. Make sure your hands are not in your pocket. Make sure you're doing this and make sure you, like, identify yourself that you're the person who called and that you live here before you get any help because of all these examples of these horrible things that have happened. So, I don't know. I struggle with that all the time. Like, I'm glad that now he's a baby, so I have time to, like, try to figure out the way to deliver the message to him. But I definitely struggle with not making him afraid or angry and going through life, like, mm. still wanting to try things. Still wanting to go places and meet other people. You know, right now when you were just talking and saying, like, how you have to prepare and say, you know, don't put your, you know, have your hands in your pocket with a hoodie and all that stuff. Um, it, it really took me back to when you were a kid because I remember having conversations with oh, you not. that it was it was about um, sexuality and um, you know um, violence against her as a, as a woman uh, you know as a female body person and so we had a lot of things that we talked about you know it was like do you have this do you have that you got your phone tell me this don't leave your friend behind remember don't leave a drink behind all of the things right and it just makes me think about in terms of when I think about the uh, the ways in which um, shit happens and the information that people get and because of uh, racism and oppression that we have like uh, people of color or uh, people of color families or black families uh, that um, completely talk about race because that is a necessary thing that's always there that <laughs> is present consistently right but less talk about um, sex sexuality and gender and things like that and then we have white families that have those resources have these things and then um, have the ability to have their kids in schools that do have that um, teachings and parents um, talk to their kids a little bit more about sex and gender now I'm totally generalizing here um, but don't talk about race right so there definitely needs to be a, a, a shifting <laughs> a little bit to talk about all of these things because they're um, uh, uh, we're talking about race but I'm also you know I raised a black woman right so we're talking about race and then on top of that we got to be talking about all the shit that happens with sexism um, and how to navigate that you know and so when we're when we're talking to our um, children of color and we're preparing them around sex and sexuality and gender, then we one we expand their minds of things that so when um, you know that our ideas of who are uh, what a woman is, what a man is, how a woman should behave or a man should behave or who should be dating who and how people should be having sex or whatever, those things are shifted, expanded. It's not such a, a, a foreign thing, you know, that is so scary that it would shift the behavior. It would shift so many things, right? And 
On the other hand, if we had white parents talking to their children uh, about race, that would do the same. And when I say talking, it, like you, you have a lot of experience with this because Mandy went to a pretty much all white um, until middle high school. school, middle school up until you went to high school. That's when you went to like an all black um, high school because you so you needed it <laughs> basically. You you begged for that, right? And that experience, I remember how I behaved um, and how I had to, how I felt like I had to behave and what I had, the information I had to give you in order to navigate white space, right? Yeah, it was, it's, it was always such a, it's like two different worlds, hanging out with my friends or going to school with them or going to their houses and then going to my house or my grandmother's house or cousins and stuff like that it was so 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 different so i feel like i i'm always i was always like a foot in each world for so long um but i did notice like a lot of differences lots of differences in the way that um the parents speak to their kids i feel like like i don't know i think a lot of things well i know for a fact a lot of things that black parents or black people in general do now stem from you know generational things um from slavery and beyond and stuff the things that we do um what do you mean the things that we do like i feel like like for example um like historically they you know black people are afraid of dogs and i'm just like well historically they've been used as a, mm. a tool of violence against us so We've learned, like, oh, when you hear dogs, that's trouble. If you see the dogs coming, it's trouble. So, you know, we just stay away from dogs. And, like, even with the way I feel like POC parents speak to their kids, like, about things like, like race and stuff, it's so stern because it's very important. It's imperative. It's survival. Yes. And with white kids and their parents, if they, like, they talk to them so open and freely, like, it's just like, you know, when you figure it out, there's nothing riding on it. That's like there's nothing that you that that you have to be like. You will probably not get into the school because you're white. You probably won't get this job because you're white. Mm -hmm. They probably will not hire you because your hair is too straight. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really think they like your freckles. It might not go with the aesthetic <laughs> of the restaurant. Um, is your hair naturally curly? Could you straighten it? Do you have you ever heard of a relaxer? Like, <laughs> So, you know, like, they navigate so differently. It's like, oh, you want to do that? Then great. Yeah, let's, like, look into programs or something. And on the other hand, it's like, ooh, do I have the money? Is it exclusive? Is it this? Is it that? So, you know, again, two totally different worlds. It's, it's like, it's just so different. It's really, really different when you live based on survival and when you just live. Mm. And also the way I had to interact with the school, with her, um... You, I was called a lot <laughs> because um, because uh, Mandy had opinions, and so they didn't like that. They didn't like her talking, and so they they deemed her a troublemaker. The my my specific title was safety issue. That was what was always said. It's I'm a safety, safety issue. Yes, it's not safe for me to tell a teacher that they were being rude or that they were being racist or right. that I wasn't the one I was talking it was somebody else when they tried to kick me out and they were embarrassed so you know like it was always a kick out of the classroom she's a safety issue or some type of suspension or mm -hmm. a write-up or it's always 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 and I was there always fighting for her and and putting and just saying no uh, because I knew where it was coming from and that's the additional stuff you know like that's like that and that's just a little bit you know like I know other parents that have to deal with so much more um, when it comes to navigating race uh, racism and class issues as well um, so it, it, it goes beyond the um, really the, the niceness you know it's like I keep thinking about you know I'm a nice white lady it's like this thing about if I'm nice enough everything will be good and nice is okay nice is okay but that's just it's like not a, enough a tiny little you know that that's so small so small because it's like um, when you think about how they assume that that little bit of niceness or that one sentence is going to make it go away that always makes me think of the quote that 
because we're black, we're always going to have to be 150% better than everybody else just to get, like, half of the credit or something. Like, mm -hmm. it's all, especially for black women, like, we always have to go above and beyond, above and beyond, above and beyond just to be seen on the same level as somebody else. And it's very exhausting. And then I always get that, oh, you're so angry, you're so aggressive, you're so this. And I'm like, if you lived in the reality that I lived in, you would be pretty upset too. Like, how I have to take a train for like, you know, a half an hour and just seeing the complete difference in how the neighborhood is structured. Mm -hmm. How you guys have more parks that are clean. How you guys, you know, have a full library in your school when there's schools in Brooklyn that don't have anything like there's no library there's no art class there's no music class there's no sports and then going to a middle school where they're like oh i'm taking violin and piano and then i have chinese on saturdays and then i'm on soccer and then i was just like Much it more resources it blew my mind i'm just like wow like i know kids whose parents work like three jobs just so they could go to dance classes like not even at Alvin Ailey, like, just for some regular dance classes. So, I'm like, it's, again, it's so different, and I'm just, like, seeing the differences added to my anger and to my understanding of the injustice and being, like, something's not right. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, I know my mom works a lot. Why is it so different? You know, mm -hmm. like, it's like when, um, what is it, uh, The House Hunters? They'll be like, oh, you know, my wife is a butterfly collector, and I make t-shirts out of excess lint from the dryer, but our budget is $18 million. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just like, wow, that must be nice. Because, you know, like, my dad was a cop and has a pension, and then my mom was a nurse and did all this shit. You know what I got? I, I got a rusty Honda from 1950 or something. So, you know, like... It's the differences are ridiculous. <laughs> so I, I'm thinking about uh, um, the ways, and I, I keep saying like the way I had to behave with um, um, when talking to white parents. Um, My principal. How how um, how I used to tell you how to be, right when when you were with them, um, and also checking too to see how they're responding to her right because i always want to know how are they treating you you know how what, what's going on it's because it's happened many a time right and so uh, think about this right let's so i had this little experience with Joaquin, even my little sweet potato right um where he was playing with uh, a little child who's white and little kid is sweet and parents have taught her how to you know tell the truth be nice be honest you know don't lie good All right but even something as simple as that um, without having any context uh, around race or class or any kind of intersectional analysis really shifts things right because like um, <clears throat> she kept uh, when Joaquin was playing with her she kept telling on him over and over, you know, like he's doing this and he's doing that and he's touching this and he's touching that and over and over and over. Um, it kept reminding me of the when white people call cops, you know, because I saw something wrong. I'm going to do something about it. Right. And they think they're doing something good, but they're really not. But it messes things up. Right. And so this is why I'm, um, I was super vigilant about. Um, sweet potato because I was like I want to know everywhere he is I have to see every everything he's doing and it's almost like this instinctual thing because I want to make sure that if anything happened anything broke anything went missing that he wouldn't be blamed for it because I would know exactly where he was at all times and it's and you know it's just so it's not silly I was gonna say it's so silly it's not silly because it comes from something right? that's another <laughs> generational thing right. like you gotta keep them close for somebody blame them for something so, I'm, like I feel like that you will always just want to be a step ahead so they can never catch us slipping you know you always gotta be two steps ahead like oh no that wasn't my kid because my kids were here I'm watching him he's good he listens he's right here Right. I it's didn't like, do it like nothing's wrong. I didn't do anything anxiety anxiety lots of anxiety So we're navigating a lot of anxiety Because um, there's a lot of them. policing happening even mm -hmm. with toddlers clearly they're learning how to police at a young age no, But like in that instance with the little girl, you know, like um, As she gets older if she continues to do that, you know, like it, If they had a different analysis 
then she would understand that um, sometimes you just can't call the cops. Sometimes it's you have to deal with things in a different way, right? But it's almost this like, this is the right way to do things and this is the wrong way to do things. And this is how we maintain those things. It's like maintaining this like status quo. And so we really have to think about that. So it's like beyond the niceness, then how are you teaching your children? Well, but first of all, how are you working on it internally? That's what I say starts with you internally and then how are you teaching your kids about it interpersonally as well like how they behave with other people um, and then what are you doing in this time right now to try to dismantle white supremacy um, structurally right so what can you do um, to try to do that because you can tell your kids all day long that it's you know good to be a nice person but they also watch you and then they also watch what's happening in the world, which brings me to, of course, um, kids are completely anxious about what's happening right now. And so we got to make sure that when you're watching the news, that the young ones are not there with you. Um, we're talking to Filter. them about these things, but we don't want them bombarded with these images and things because this is already a lot it's of a anxiety. Lot. Um, so talking with your kids age appropriately, of course, teenagers are going to have way more information and way more access, access you know, to stuff. Um, and so that is the best time to be really talking about expressing emotions, you know, expressing rage and anger, especially for people of color. This is like to really express and to talk about it, to talk to friends is really important um, and talk as a family because this is um, another historical moment that's happening right now. And sorry to cut mm -hmm. you off. Um, and even though it's a corny line, but mm -hmm. race is not just black and white. There's so much gray. So, so, so much gray. And that's what we need to be working on. Because if it was black and white, you know, there probably wouldn't be racism. If it was so, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if it was so simple to be like, oh, if this causes it, then just do this to not have it. Right. If it was that easy, right, right, these conversations right. wouldn't, be ha wouldn't be had. But... We all have to focus on that gray area, which is, like you said, um, internally, interpersonally, um, institutionally. institutionally. We have to, there's many, many ways that you can do that. You mm -hmm. know, there's not just, we're not saying, oh, you know, you should just donate all your money to these people. Oh, you should go protest because, you know, there's many things that come with that. Um, but there are other ways that you can do it, even if it's something just like within yourself or, you know, I decided like I had this person in my life not me but say I have a person in my life that was really racist and you know did a lot of ignorant things and I'm like not having that person in my life to you know continue with these stupid ideas because it's mm -hmm. like you know the company you keep reflects on you exactly. even if you don't believe these things it's like then why are you friends with someone who does right why are you allowing this person to speak this way you know etc because it does it's not just words because words hurt and they lead to actions mm -hmm. so every little thing like that it really makes a difference yes absolutely and also what's your kids library like what's the book the books that you are their reading? dolls the shows that they're watching is it all just you know one color or is it multicultural like mm -hmm. i know for example with my son we watch shows that have a whole multicultural cast of children we watched shows that were mm -hmm. like from india mm -hmm. we've watched african shows stuff from spain like we watch a whole bunch of things because I want him to know like that people look differently, people speak differently, they eat differently, they dance differently. Like, mm -hmm. so I, I'm glad that he sees the differences in people, and he's. I mean, of course, because you know, as a baby, he still loves everybody, but <laughs> we want to continue that. Right. And it just made me think too, like when you said all the people, different places. I know a lot of people tend to talk about it, like you know, that there's so many different cultures, and that's that's what makes the world so beautiful. But. Yeah. But, <laughs> right? Yeah, and because of that difference, there's so Same. many things that happen, right? And so, and when we talk about, when we talk to our kids about um, police brutality and talk about anti, you know, anti-blackness and racism, all of these things, that we want to make sure that we're also providing um, some, you know, language about hope and um, the changes that have happened and the changes that we want to see you know like talking in this manif manifesting what we're doing the, the rallies that are happening the things that people are doing right now um, like we want to highlight those things because it is scary 
and kids are going to be afraid and we need to help manage that fear but we don't want to bombard them with things and we also want to provide some sense of hope because that's why we're fighting that's why people are in the streets right now fighting that's why people are donating money people are writing things people are you know organizing there are many different ways that people are contributing you know? Because I know with that bombardment bombardment of information and images, it is a lot. Like, for me, I know I, myself, I stopped watching the news um, after 9-11. Because when that happened, I was, what, 12 years old? 11, 12 years old? And, you know, my school was right by the Twin Towers, so I already saw it firsthand. You younger than that. It was 2001. You always seem so little to me. <laughs> I was a little. Yeah. mind, it was so little. Yeah, September 2001, I turned 12 already. Yeah, so I was. No, I was 11. I just turned 11. Okay. So, sense. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I remember I used to <clears throat> go on the WB11 so I could watch Sabrina after school. And then it was just news, news, news on every channel for days and days and days. And I was just like, I'm so tired of seeing this. I don't want to see this anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, to see people jumping out of buildings and bleeding and dying and covered in dust like i'm like why do i need to see this every single day like we know how bad it was so i'm just like that after that like you see how long it's been i had i don't watch the news at all unless someone else is watching it and i'm forced to wait until they change the channel but i personally do not like to watch it because it's all about fear and it's never like to give anything positive and if you watch the news like that all the time it's just going to make you afraid and you have to filter that with the children you know like they need the information but they also need like you said the hope right. and i wouldn't say don't watch the news because at least you're getting information oh, no, about yeah, yeah. the news <laughs> right that, that's my decision <clears throat> right. personal decision still get the information about the news other ways we need to know what's happening in the world but you know um yes and um you know think about I also think about like uh, teenagers, right? What if your kid went and started dating someone who was black? It would that be the first time that you would have talked about anything about race, anti-blackness, or anything, right? Um, again, the talk, the race talk, the sex talk. These things should be talked about consistently, always and forever. I don't care if you live in the whitest city in America. You should always be talking about race and anti-blackness because even though you might not have people around you, you have a TV, you have And it's computer. ingrained in our entire society. You can't right. miss it. There you cannot books. miss it. <laughs> there are things, right? You, you know that there are other people that exist in the world and the hardships and struggles that people have had to endure, right? So we need to be talking about historically, right? Because this is not new. Right, when we talk to our kids about race and anti-blackness, it doesn't start right here. <laughs> and the murder of black people by cops has been going on since they were overseers. And then after slavery ended, they got these little badges to help, you know, find missing blacks. And after that, it continues. So we've been being murdered since day one. Mm -hmm. This is not anything new. It's just, this is the first time in history that people are recording the deaths. So we have evidence of it. And we can actually see for like right before our eyes that it is police brutality pr police brutality mm -hmm. and it's not a oh maybe that we're seeing it that these people are being murdered for no reason so it's a different reaction now than just hearing about it or hearing a news story you're seeing somebody dying in front of you mm -hmm. so it's very very different to have it in your face mm -hmm. and this is not just about police brutality it's about anti-blackness in, in general right and how uh, black people are seen and viewed in this world because we could also talk about the murders of black trans women right and so this is again talking about race and talking about sex and sexuality and gender right the importance of that because these women were seen as a throwaway as throwaway and not important right so we're talking about their the, value yeah value exactly value and so there are the murders the the enormous murder of black trans women and, and uh, trans women of color and the murders of the by police and we see this people are recording it I mean I am back watching all of the protests and rallies about and, and you see the recordings you see the proof right there and time and time again the injustice that continues to happen and this is this is why we're here in this moment continuing continuing and so it is the perfect opportunity if you haven't started you start now 
um, because you need to catch up to families of color who have been doing this hundreds of years <laughs> and feeling the anxiety the high vibration of you know th this anxiety um, holding this holding this and it's it's time for a shift where we need to uh, share it yeah white people need to hold this as well um, use your privilege for good mm -hmm. you know don't just write a hashtag or say, well, I feel like this, or change your profile picture to a black fist. Mm -hmm. Really be about the change mm -hmm. and be about the people who need this change. Right. Yes. Yes, and, and think about it. And one, one thing, the last thing I'll say about this is to also make sure, just really make sure that if you want to be an ally or be in solidarity with folks that you are not speaking for people of color don't take up space just don't. don't shut up even if you're trying to be nice and all that stuff take the cue from the person of color let them speak about their experience don't speak for them you will never understand so just please do that even if in the nicest way sometimes those instances just it just doesn't work it just doesn't work right and also i said that was the last thing but that's a <laughs> lie i wanted to add um that you know the thing about uh, white fragility, you know, right now where people are understanding their white privilege and, um, you know, white supremacy and all of this stuff that um, people, white people are just feeling, you know, so beside they wanna, themselves. They want to be held, but we're not going to hold you. And really, it's okay to feel that. It is okay to feel that because that is your process, but we cannot hold that. We cannot hold that, and we cannot have you place that fragility um, at the center of this conversation about race. It has nothing to do with that, right? We need to talk about it and not talk about you at the center of it. Right? So really think about how you choose your words, how you talk to your kids, and there are tons of wonderful books. Uh, like I said, look at the resources afterwards because there's some um, good... Um, um, some good tips on some uh, websites, uh, some uh, podcasts, and also um, some uh, POC um, links uh, to other uh, parents, articles. yeah, ar uh, other parent articles, and so a lot of good stuff there. So really look through it because there are some um, good information there. Uh, so um, yeah, this is just a, a little you know tip of the iceberg, something to really Very put tip. out there. Um, to really really think about how you're talking about this and you mentioned too parents who have a biracial children uh, parents who white parents who have adopted uh, uh, black children or POC children like that's a whole nother conversation it is it's a bigger <laughs> conversation but it is definitely about how are you um, talking about it how are you behaving around it what are you actually showing what do you believe and are you contributing to the systematic racism and oppression of people of color? Even in your small, tiny way of not educating your child is contributing. So think about it. Because race is the, uh, when I said race is the other four-letter word, the title of this thing is because we oft often think that love will just do everything. No, race. We need to talk about race. You racism. thought that 50 years ago in the yeah. 60s, remember? Yeah. It is. <laughs> so time it is so time so i put you to the task um um for white parents please talk to your children do your homework talk educate to yourself. yourselves <laughs> educate yourselves uh, and do your part to help dismantle this fucked up racist uh system that we currently live in yes right. and stay safe love each other and above all stay black